Is your contact information scattered all over? Do you want to organize it? Hi, this is Crystal. I've just posted a new version of my free contact management application for Access. I hope you take the time to go get it and use it. The download link is in the video description. The music for this video came from Ken Gaines of Houston, Pride of the Morning. The old folks call it the Pride of the Morning. The first breeze to smack the shore of dawn. As if to emphasize just how swiftly that wind can rise and blow away the lines that we've drawn. The main form of the contacts database is called FC underscore menu underscore contact. You can enter people and companies, addresses, phone numbers, email addresses, web pages, lists. Just like a telephone book, people and companies are listed together here. Now, how do you find them? There's a number of ways. What you will probably use the most is the Find Combo box in the form header. With no filters, the sample data shows 1,387 contacts to pick from. Drop the green filter list and choose Friend. Now there are only seven contacts in the Find Combo box. The Find by Address combo is also filtered for the Friend category. A couple people marked as Friend have more than one address, since I only have seven friends and there are nine addresses. The Find by CID combo shows every contact in the database by the CID, which is the primary key in the contacts table. You can sort the Find combo differently. Currently, people are listed by whether or not they are active then first name, then last name. Company order is the same no matter how humans are sorted. With the filter on friend, this example shows Madison at the bottom of the list of choices since she is not active. I clear the filter by clicking X next to the green filter combo. Now all the names show again. I start typing who I want to find. Brent T. Greer. Here is his record. He has two addresses. The primary address is currently displayed. Brent also has a mailing address. There are three phone numbers listed, two email addresses, and one website. I can quickly show Brent's mailing address by selecting Mailing from the Find Address list. The company page of the tab control shows that Brent works for A&M Surplus. Brent is marked as a prospect. If I can't get a hold of Brent, I wonder if I can contact someone else at A&M Surplus. I double-click on the company combo box to switch to the record for A&M Surplus. On the A&M Surplus company page, notice there are eight contacts listed, so I could call somebody else. I click on Brent's name to go back to his record. The personal page gives you a place to enter birthday, gender, title, suffix, nickname, and mark as human or not. Birthday is collected in three values, year, month, and day. Let's say you know the birthday is December 15th, but you don't know the year, so you can still store the information. The lists page shows that Brent is on my Christmas card list. I could put Brent on more lists. If you want to add people to lists, instead of lists to people, or you want to create a new list, click on the Lists Form button. I see that Brent is the only one marked for my Christmas card list so far. As I check boxes in the Pick Members list on the right, names are added to the list members on the left. You can use these lists any way you like. I'm closing the list form and going back to the Contacts form, the Notes tab shows two subforms with notes. On the left are notes directly related to the contact, and on the right you see notes related to records that are related to the contact. There are notes for Brent on an email address, a phone number, and a web page. When entering addresses, you can specify an address type. Always choose primary for the first address you enter, or at least for one of the addresses that is there. The same for phone, email, and website, since there are reports that only show primary contact information. For A&M Surplus, I want to enter an alternate address. I click on Alternate in the Find Address list. 
Since nothing is listed for alternate, there is nothing to find. And Access asks if I want to create an alternate address. I do. First, I fill the zip code, since that will also populate city and state. The data for the zips table came from the 1999 U.S. Census. It is a little dated, but most of what you need for zip codes will be there, and you can always add more records. Some of the versions of this form I created had the zip control first, but that looked strange, so I put it back down on the bottom. The address is already designated as alternate. I enter another phone number by clicking on the phone control in the last record and just start typing, or I could click the little plus button. Because the number I am entering is nearly the same as the number in the previous record, I press control ditto, that's what I call it, it's actually control double quote mark, to copy the value from the record above. By the way, I learned that from working in Excel and I just tried it in Access and hey, it works there too. Then I simply change the last digit, which is the only part of the value that's different, and I set the phone type to be fax. There are two email addresses already entered, one for primary and one for alternate. To send an email, just double click on the email address. Whatever is designated as your default email program will launch already addressed to your contact. Simply fill in your subject body and send. You can also double click on a website to go to that web page. This web address was made up. I will get a contact with real records. This is the United States Embassy in London. I entered another real contact to demonstrate fellow Access developer and YouTube video maker Adrian Bell. Click in the find combo and start typing his name. When I see Adrian, I click him to find him. Wonder where he is. I click the Bing map button. Even though I'm missing part of the address, Bing will do the best it can with the information it has been given. Adrian lives in the London area. Adrian has a number of free resources, and I've only just started entering references to them. I double-click on one of his links to pull it up. This is an article about Adrian's free database analyzer. This link opens Adrian's business website. He consults in the UK with Access and Excel and, of course, everything else in Office. And he's also a DOS hound. Another way to enter references to websites is with the Anywhere Attachments feature. Click the yellow pushpin icon. I've already entered a few attachments for Adrian. Three of them are files on my drive, and one of them is a link to a YouTube video. When you choose a file to attach, Access makes a copy of it and links the record to the copy it made. This leaves you free to move the original file without losing it. I click on one of Adrian's pictures. Oops! I forgot to put the attachments folder in my test directory so the file can be found. Let me do that now. I open the front end database again. Because the back end tables were successfully found, I am not prompted to locate them. Access remembers I was looking at Adrian. I click on the attachments icon and now I see Adrian's pictures. Adrian and I were connected on Skype, and I saw him through his webcam, so I took a few screenshots of him with Snagit. The fourth reference is a link to one of Adrian's videos. The link could also be entered in the website section. It's up to you how you want to organize your information. When I click the Open button, I go to the link, and Adrian's video starts playing. This is really good, and so is the video he just posted. He's technical, so if you want to get into the bits and bytes, watch his videos. From Adrian's video page, I can go to his channel and see what else he's posted. This video is about how to open access programmatically and bypass the startup code. Another great tutorial. I want to be able to find the code that Adrian gave me to bypass startup stuff quickly, so I will also attach it to his record. I click the New button. An input box pops up asking if this is a file or a web address. It doesn't matter what you pick here. It only asks so it can position you in the right control. And also if you pick File, it'll also click the Browse button for you. You can cancel the browse without canceling creating a new record and click in the URL box if what you are entering is a web address and you didn't type W in the input box. I close the Anywhere Attachments form and find another record. 
I decide to come back to Adrian so I can look at his open bypass code. When I open the BAS file with his code, I see it in Notepad++, my favorite text editor. The attachments directory is in a folder below the database. You can now see another file, mod underscore bypass underscore neopod.base. This is the file I just added as a reference. I can open it from Access or double-click on the file in the Attachments directory. I prefer to store attachments as separate files than big blobs in Access. Once you've associated an attachment with a record, you always have it. You can also pick attachments from the Attachments directory for other records. Access will not make another copy. It will point to the same file from several places. I just pasted a picture that I took in the mountains when the aspen trees were turning to the attachments directory. I sent this picture to Adrian, so I will add a reference to it. Just beautiful. Mighty ships take heed of the pride of the morning. Mighty nations crumble and they fall. But it's a breeze that makes a banner speak, and blessed are the small and sleek, the riot, the breath of God above it all. I go to the lists page for Adrian. This was when Adrian wasn't on any list. I want to create an MVP list, so I click the list form button. I click the plus button to add a new list and enter MVP as the list name. I close the list form and pick MVP for Adrian. I can add more MVPs by opening the list form and picking more people from the pick members list. I find my record and check me too. You can create lists for anything, however you want to categorize your contacts. What about a Christmas card list? Now, as you have friends you don't want to forget when the busy holidays roll around, add them to the list. Another way to categorize contacts is by filling category. This is the same as the categories listed at the top of the form to filter the find combo box. The company page of A&M Surplus shows the contacts I've put under this company. I click a name to go to that record. To go back to the company I came from, I can double click the company name in the company combo box. You can edit contact categories by clicking the button on the company's form. Ideally, what opens up would be a form and not a table. Maybe one of you will build it, send it to me, and I can put it in for everybody else. This table gives you the ability to hook in new tables and add new categories. For many of your categories, you will not need another table. If you have a category such as Customer that tracks other information and has related tables, create a new table and record it in C underscore tables. Every table listed here has a TID assigned to it as well as a standard alias and other information. This is needed for the Anywhere features and is also used by the contact management system. I want to mark A&M Surplus as a supplier also, so I click the plus supplier button. If the contact you are looking for is a human, you can click the filter checkbox. Now there are less names on the find combo, and all of them are humans, not companies. My golf buddy Andy is also marked as a customer, but mostly we play golf. People can be more than one thing. It doesn't make sense to have a table of customers with the same information as a table of golf buddies, when you can just keep track of it like this. Andy is also a supplier, so I click the plus supplier button. Done. This one entity, Andy, is a golf buddy, a customer, and a supplier. Customer and supplier categories also have tables and related tables with more information. And I will ride on the pride of the morning, set my sails at the break of day. Once you have information in your database, you want to report it. Click the Reports page. There are eight reports and several controls for criteria. The main category shows the most important category for each contact, the one that was marked on the contact form. Marked categories have corresponding tables with more information. 
The Reports page gives you a way to generate reports and filter the results using criteria. The List Combo box shows the lists that you have set up. Contact displays everyone sorted by name. Company displays companies that have contacts first and then is sorted by name. City, state, zip, and country are listed from the addresses table and the number of records for each value is displayed. Patterns give you great flexibility and ability to find something when you don't know exactly who or what you are looking for. The pattern itself will be surrounded with asterisks so that it can be found within a value. You can also type wildcards in your pattern. For instance, B star C E finds Beatrice and Bruce, while S M question mark T H finds both Smith and Smythe. Only one address matches the pattern, S U N star S T. Fourteen contacts have addresses with 224 in the zip code. Two contacts have phone numbers containing 9797. Criteria can be combined. There are two contacts in the airport list that have island in their name. Currently, date criteria is only applied to the notes report. The contact report shows all contact information you have entered. If a contact works for a company, you will see company contact information too. Company contact shows a roster of everyone who works for a company. The addresses report shows you everyone who has an address and what type of address it is, and multiple addresses if they have them. Every 5160 mailing labels makes it easier for you to address your envelopes. Phone numbers is listed alphabetically by contact. The birthdays report is sorted by month and then day. It shows who you might want to buy gifts for or send cards to. The notes report shows the Anywhere notes you have entered into the contact system. My Company information shows what is in the My Company table. This is for you to customize as you add on to the database. This is the contact report for my friends. I can limit the addresses report to just my friends. Click the Clear Criteria button to see all records on all reports. I choose Adrian Bell from the contact list. Any report I look at is now filtered for Adrian. I clear criteria and look at addresses in Colorado. There are two contacts with three addresses if I filter for country equals UK. Nine addresses have green in them somewhere. Take my hands off of the wheel. Quit this helplessness I feel. Let the pride of the morning come and blow me away. Two contacts have G-R-A-H in their name. Four people have phone numbers with 123 in them somewhere. Reports give you great flexibility. This is really just a start. Almost every system I develop has contacts in it, so this goes into many of the databases that I build. Now when you first open the contact database after you download it, you're not going to start with the forms. It's going to start by Access telling you it can't find the back end. My development directory is not going to be called the same as the directory that you're going to put the program in. Now some people would just say, ah, I'll just make a directory called that and I'll put the files there and everything will work just fine. That's not necessary. There are two files in my test directory, the back end and the front end. Now you will also have an attachments directory when you unzip the download. The contacts database is split into a front end and a back end. The front end has underscore fe underscore in the file name. The back end with the tables containing data has underscore BE underscore in the file name. When you open the front end, Access checks to see if it can find the back end. If it can't find what it's looking for, the application shows the administrator form. Currently, I'm the designated user. 
The backend database is still in the same location, but its name has changed. I click the Relink button. Access automatically finds my backend and relinks the tables. A message box tells me the name of the file, the path, how many tables were linked, and how long it took. I'm already set up in this database. At this point, I just would need to click Save and Close. You, however, you need to set yourself up so Access can keep track of what you change. When you first get this database, your name is probably not going to be in the list of users. Click on the table icon to edit the user list. Change user1 to your name and close the table. Let me point out the user categories. These are for you to use down the road if you want to assign privileges. Listed are example categories I find useful. You can, of course, change these categories to be whatever you want. My user ID is stored in a custom database property, which is handled by VBA in the base underscore crystal underscore properties dot 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 module. Once the user is set, the property value is persistent even when the database is closed and opened again. That's one thing I love about database properties. The first time you open the contacts database, you will need to edit the user's table. Click the icon to the right of the username and, of course, change user1 to yourself. Now I want to point out the paths. Don't worry about the path to the back end. This will be changed by the admin form when you relink. If desired, you may also use the fields for other paths and reference them in your code. And, and there are also provisions to collect them on the admin form. You just have to turn some other controls on. There's also a field for password using the password input mask. So the value shows up as asterisks in case you want to use that. Close the users table on the admin form. Pick your name from the user list. Click the browse button or double click on the back end path to launch the folder picker. Navigate to the directory where the contacts back end database is. Access will find the file with underscore be underscore in the file name and link to it. It does need to be the only one. You can rename the back end as long as you ensure that underscore be underscore is still in the file name and it is the only file named like that in the directory. I do that because I add the time date stamp to files often and I still want access to find it even though I changed its name. Unlike most other split databases where the back end needs to keep the same name, I set my relinker tool up to find databases that have a trigger. Click Save and Close to write your changes to the custom database properties so records you add and change will be noted with your user ID. To create a new record in the contacts database, click the New button and simply type the name, last name, first name, once I enter the first name, notice the human checkbox is not checked, but because companies don't have a first name, as soon as I tab out a first name, human gets checked. It doesn't stop at middle name, nickname, or suffix, but of course you can click in there and fill them out yourself. Gender is female. I can also add the new contact to any of my categories as well as any of my lists and Annie is one of my friends so I'm going to add her to the Christmas card list OK and now I have a record to change. In summary we haven't covered everything about the contact system. The contact page lists the main contact information for somebody, their addresses, their phone numbers, their email addresses, and their websites. The company page allows you to associate a company with the person so this person can be a company contact. And it allows you to switch back and forth very quickly between the person and the company. The personal tab is personal information that doesn't apply to companies, only applies to people. Lists lets you associate the contact with one or more lists. These are the notes that you enter for the contact, either directly with, to the contact or you attach a note to a related record. We have uh, very rich uh, reports. The foundation is here, good structure. All you have to do is add on. I hope you enjoy using the contacts database and I'm always happy to hear your feedback.
I'm going to download this contacts database from Crystal's web page. Open it with WinRAR, select the contents and simply drag it to this folder that I made earlier called contacts. It then copies the contents across. I can now close that file. I've done what I needed. I'm going to try and rename this file, but I've got a problem. I'm looking at the properties and I notice down the bottom a security feature. This file came from another computer and might be blocked to help protect this computer. There's an unblock option. Crystal brought my attention to this, not something I've come across before. You can unblock individual files. It turns out if I try to unblock multiple files, that feature doesn't even show. So we have to do each file individually. Files are blocked because they've come from an external source and may be untrustworthy. A quick way to unblock, you can open the properties of a file from Windows Explorer. Alt-Enter will always open the properties. If you want to unblock it, you can select the Alt-K option. Attachments is a folder. To be able to see what, what, what are folders and what files have which attributes, you can add the attributes column to Windows Explorer, and that's what I'm doing here. From there, you'll see the D attribute indicates it's a directory or folder. I'm going to just check and notice, even though it's a single folder selected, there is no security option here to unblock. Only individual files can be unblocked. Even if you try to select a group of files, a number of files in a selection, it won't give you the option to unblock those files. It can only be done individually. I'm going into the folder. I'm going to open each one. Alt-Enter will open the, the properties page. Alt-K will press the unblock button and Enter will submit that. So I can do each one individually quickly. Now I'm going to rename this. I want to be contact underscore BE dot ACDB. Crystal tells me that it needs to be in the format underscore BE underscore whatever to be recognized by the front end. So I'm going to rename them to be consistent with that. Just open the file by double clicking on it. Because the database was last used as someone else with the back end in a different position, it recognizes that the back end isn't where it should be and pops up the administrator menu to allow us to change the user and configure that user so that we can specify where the back end is to be found. You'll notice from here, I'm not crystal. So I need to go to the table icon. I'm going to change the name in one of these to mine. I'm not going to set the path. That can be done through the interface. Or I'm going to give myself a password. Close that table and now select me as a user. You'll notice there's no back end path specified. So I'm going to click on the ellipsis button and select the folder where both the front end and the back end are found. And then I save and close and it opens up the main form. This has failed because the relinking takes time. This has tried to start the, the form before the relinking is completed. Done relinking, elapsed time 22 seconds. Go back to the admin form, try the relink. Really what we need to do is make sure that we only try and open the main form once the relinking is completed. That's now completed. 89 link tables, seven resident tables, 89 link paths of no change. Okay, and now we save and close again. This time it should work, but we're gonna close the database and reopen it again. Here it is opening again, loading, please wait. Right, it's ready to go. Certain details available here. This is obviously my details, adrianbell.mvp at accessconsultantuk.co.uk. A bunch of links down the bottom right there, the websites, bit of detail there. This drawing pin, dress pin, whatever it is, shows the attachments. And if I click on that, you'll notice at the top in the find box, there are a bunch of different attachments that can be looked at. I'm going to select one of those videos and click on the open document or go to URL button, which opens a web page and that's the video. You can look at that later if you like, but we don't want to do that now. So close that form and have a look at some of the web links. On the bottom right, we have the web links. This one is my MVP profile. I'll just double click on that and it opens the page. Another one I'd like to have a look at is this article, Invoking a Database from the Command Line. That's it. Thanks very much, Crystal. It's great. Thank you, Adrian. I'm glad you like it. Thank you so much for showing how to fix problems that can come when files are downloaded from the Internet by unblocking them. You did a great job of showing what to do with the contacts database download and setting up a new user. One more quick technical detail about the contacts database. 
This is the relationships diagram. There are lots of tables that have been carefully thought out in case you want to expand what you are attracting. All you need to do is add fields to the tables and create additional forms and reports. If you want help, contact me. I connect with people just like you and we develop together as a team. Thanks for watching. Through sharing, we will all get better.